Hey guys, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to touch on some vegan facts that I think are pretty persuasive um, for either vegans out there that need some extra facts when they're asked questions or if someone's trying to discourage veganism, you can pull these out and use them whenever you would like, or for non-vegans out there that either just want to learn more um, and have some like really factual based evidence on why veganism is better for your health, the environment, animals, all that. So I'm definitely gonna make at least a part two to this video because there's a lot of stuff out there that I think is very, very persuasive and I'm just gonna touch on some things that I could think of off the top of my head and just looked up and so stay tuned for those, just letting you know I'm making more. All right, and like always, I will put all my sources that I use down below so you guys can fact check me if there's any fact that you think is not real, you can go check it out and see for yourself. Um, so first I'm going to start out with a couple environmental things about veganism. Okay, so first this fact I thought was crazy. 90% of deforestation in rainforests is due to animal agriculture. 90% of it. So if you're somebody who is getting upset that rainforests are being destroyed by other means, just know that that's only up to 10% of them that are actually being destroyed by those other ways. And if you are still somebody who eats animal products, maybe think about how those food choices are affecting rainforests as well. Greenhouse gas emissions from animal agriculture outweigh the emissions from all transportation combined. It is around two times more emission just from animal agriculture than it is from every single transportation out there. Another thing I think is just very persuasive to go vegan is that we could literally end world hunger if we fed the crops that we're feeding to animals, if we fed them directly to humans, which would be what would happen if the whole world went vegan. We would literally have way less crops than we do now because we wouldn't have to have that many to feed animals because there wouldn't be that many animals bred into existence to be fed and cows, pigs, chickens, whatever, eat a lot more than humans do because one, like cows just, a single cow eats more than a human does because they're a bigger animal and also because there are billions more animals than there are humans, so obviously they're gonna eat way more. If the world went vegan, we'd end world hunger. Um, now I'm gonna insert a picture somewhere on the screen here that I found about carbon footprints um, and veganism. And one of the quotes it says on there is, a portion of the highest impacted vegetable protein emits less than the lowest impact animal proteins. So going vegan cuts your carbon footprint at least in half. At the very, very least, if you're still eating the bad vegetable proteins, the ones that emit the most carbon. Um, so yeah, if you want to lower your carbon footprint, veganism is a great way to do that. Um, another fact I think is very, very crazy to even think about, and it's weird that it's actually true, is that we could have fishless oceans by 2048. That's in my lifetime, that's in most people's lifetime that are probably watching this video. That's crazy. Fishless oceans. No fish at all. And that's due to overfishing, climate change, pollution, um, things involved with animal agriculture. Now the water usage for animal agriculture is also insane. Animal agriculture is responsible for two thirds of all fresh water consumption. And then this is a fact I actually haven't mentioned in any video yet, which is weird. And I was someone who actually didn't really understand this at first, um, when I even first went vegan and were in it completely for the animals, for the environment, for my health, everything. At first when I just heard the statement that if you're not vegan, you cannot be a feminist. And I was like, what does feminism have to do with veganism whatsoever? Um, but then I did more research on it and people explained it to me that dairy industries profit off of female reproductive systems. If you know anything about the dairy industry, the female cows are not just naturally getting pregnant, producing milk, whatever, they are forcefully inseminated or basically raped and injected with things so that they produce way more milk than they naturally would. After they do have a baby, their babies are taken away from them within a day of having them. And so these industries are literally profiting off of a female being able to reproduce and producing milk. And um, I just, you know, no, like I personally, I think the dairy industry is way worse than the meat industry because dairy industries turn into meat industries, but just based on literally female cows being so abused and used just for their reproductive systems kind of makes the statement that you can't 
be a complete feminist if you are not vegan. That, that makes sense to me now. Now I understand that that's really what's happening and they are forcefully becoming pregnant and that is not okay. That would not be okay for a human. We think rape is wrong and so for animals, rape is also wrong. Okay, I'm gonna insert another picture on the screen here. Um, a lot of people think that uh, because humans have canines that we are supposed to eat meat. This picture demonstrates that although we have slight, you could, you can't even completely call them canines, we literally just do. They are not the same canines as other omnivores and carnivores out there. And that this isn't even a picture trying to promote veganism. This is literally just a picture showing the evolution and biology of humans. And we are not supposed to be consuming meat. We are supposed to be eating nuts and fruit and vegetables, legumes, that kind of stuff. Um, so this picture shows it, you know, I'm not gonna go through everything because there's like a lot of stuff on that picture, but if you wanna um, pause this, I'll literally link the picture down below as well. Okay, so I think this fact is probably the most persuasive because it's the most like um, thorough like research and it's very logical and just straight to the point. There's this guy, Dr. Greger, who is like the veganism expert. Um, he's written many books. He is a, obviously a doctor and um, promotes a healthy whole food plant-based lifestyle. And um, he basically does like spends his life doing research on how animal products um, affect your health. But um, the whole reason he became a doctor was because his grandma got sick when she, I don't know how old she was. Um, I can't remember what he said how old she was, but she was supposed to die at 65 because of heart disease. She just had really bad heart disease and literally doctors were, she went to many doctors and was she was trying to do anything she could and she was supposed to die at 65. That was, that was what was gonna happen. And for, I feel like a lot of people that, that happens in their family, that like you don't think if somebody has cancer or heart disease or diabetes that you can really do much if they're that bad to the point where they're saying they're gonna die like very soon. Um, so he had done some research and was trying to help her because she's his grandma and he loved her and he wanted her to live more, obviously. And he basically did enough research to realize that maybe her going on a whole food plant-based diet, so I'm not talking junk food vegans, I'm talking just very natural foods, not processed, um, but a vegan diet and seeing if that would help her. And he, you know, he probably expected her to maybe live a little longer, or like something like that. Um, but only two weeks on that diet, she was able to start doing things that she had not done in years. like get up, walk around, live normally, like actually live a good life and not just be sitting around dreading her disease that she has. And let me just reiterate, that was two weeks on this diet, only two weeks. And she has the last stage of heart disease where she is supposed to die. And then after that, she realized it was, you know, that diet was really, really helping her and her life and so she continued doing that and she lived another 31 years. Now I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and say that literally a plant-based diet would fix any disease you have or any single like illness or anything like that. I'm not sitting here saying that but it has been proven that eating whole food plant-based foods can reverse diseases that are irreversible or you know we think they're irreversible. There's basically no cure to them once they get past a certain point and and that it's worth a shot no it might not cure every little thing and just like if you have heart disease you're not automatically going to live another 31 years like Michael Greger's grandma did but that it's worth a shot and that there's been so many cases that it has been proven that plant-based diets can seriously help or reverse diseases such as cancer heart disease lung disease even different like asthmas and stuff, something like that, even if it's not that severe, it can help or reverse illnesses and diseases that most people would not think are curable. And then also just 
going off of that too, if you start eating plant-based before getting a disease, if that was like what was gonna happen if you didn't, you may not get the disease or you may not develop it as fast or as much. And it's it's just worth it in my opinion. Like why, why not try to do something good for yourself so you can live longer and um, live a happier life, you know? Okay, so sorry that was a really long fact, but I wanted to explain that whole story just to show you that it really, has been proven eating plant-based can can do wonders to people um, and then one more thing I want to touch on is eating meat and dairy is not natural it is by far the most unnatural thing you could be eating um, a lot of people think that it is natural because cows produce milk what's unnatural about milk you know uh, I, I will tell you so it's probably no surprise to people that animals producing meat and dairy are injected with hormones and steroids and things like that to either make them bigger and meatier or to produce more of something than they originally would um, things like that so there's a hormone called what is it RBGH which is I don't know how to pronounce that recombinant that's probably wrong. Recombine it, I don't know. Bovine growth hormone, and that is given to dairy cows so that they produce more milk, but that also causes mastitis, which is um, a disease in the udders, or excuse me, not a disease, an infection in the udders, um, which is gross and wrong to be injecting cows with that. And yeah, so the milk you're drinking has different hormones in it that would not originally be there, and that actually causes negative things to cows so it's not just like a very small amount of a hormone that is like necessary or something. And then animals are also given steroid hormones for the same types of reasons, um, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, that kind of stuff. And I'll insert another picture right here that shows the sizes of chickens in the past versus now. And that is not just like a different type of chicken or something like that. That is the same exact species, the same exact type of chicken. It is our industries, you know, injecting them more and more and more and trying to push as hard as they can because all they care about is money. Um, so I thought that picture was just, that opened my eyes. Like it, it's crazy to think that that's, that's actually happening. Okay, so this video is almost over. Sorry, it's probably long. Um, but the one thing I wanted to end on, it's not necessarily a fact, but it's something that, I feel like me personally, I got persuaded more by someone saying something that wasn't necessarily a fact, but it made me think about what I'm doing more and think about like my own actions and stuff like that. Um, so I just wanna end with like the thing that really got me thinking I feel like what really, really changed my mind and when I made that switch is when I thought about this. Um, it's the concept of your actions lining up with your morals and how morally I believe, you know, most people in this world, including me, were against animal cruelty, but you know, I was paying for animals to be killed and to be tortured for the food I was consuming. It'd, it'd be another story if we had to do that, but there's no reason um, for my health. I didn't need to eat animal products. Nobody does. It's not a necessity for human life. It's not something I had to do. And since I'm against animal cruelty, it's wrong of me to say, okay, well, it's okay in this one way, or it's okay in moderation, or in this, like, if I'm against it, it it's bad all the time. And I should stick to that. I cannot... I didn't feel comfortable fully saying I'm against animal cruelty when I was still consuming animal products. My moral is not lining up with my actions and is not lining up with what I'm actually saying and doing. The way I like to think of it is if I couldn't go out and kill a cow myself or kill a pig myself, is it morally right to have someone else do that for you and you pay them for it? You know, my answer is no. So. That's what ultimately got me to switch to veganism was really just like thinking deeply about things and having an open mind, not just being super closed off to everything. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. Also follow my Instagram, it'll be linked down below. And thank you guys for watching. Again, there will be separate parts to this video, so stay tuned for those. But anyway, I will see you guys next time.